is interesting. At the time of the robbery, the van was passing a few cars. Drivers of these vehicles reported that the first biker jumped the median and went straight for the van head on like a suicidal man madman. The van tried to avoid a collision and went off the road and overturned. The robbers took everything from uh, value from it and were about to leave when a bloody guard emerged from the van's cab and opened fire. The bikers emptied their weapons at him and fled. Alright, Vitaly uh, Samsonov is holding the plant manager over a vat of milk. The manager is crying and kicking his feet and then he wets his pants. Release the hostage immediately. The situation is more serious than we thought. Requesting reinforcements. Smatty, God Bomber, Gilbert, I'll go help them out. We have reckless endangerment at the Freeburg Zoo. We've received numerous calls from visitors at the local zoo who saw a drunken zoo employee open the cheetah cage. Dangerous cats are running amok and they have started to attack people. Platonic Barcelona, please. I can wait, but it's not going to make a difference. I was complaining at the cemetery. The caretaker at the cemetery reported strange sounds coming from the crypt. I'm afraid it's the dead finally coming back. These are dark days. Will you two check that out? Thank you. Armed robbery at the LifeWire store. A man wearing a ski mask entered the LifeWire consumer electronics store. He pulled out a gun and demanded all the money and the most expensive toaster. The store's security guard was fast on his feet and managed to knock the gun out of the robber's hand, but then he grabbed his sales assistant by the throat and he threatened him to strangle her unless his demands are met. Uh, Fish Bosch, take Williams. Check that out, please. Like Door to the vault opens and there's a rustling down in the darkness. Shine a flashlight down there. Two homeless men jump out of the darkness. They're carrying a shovel and some jewelry. Seeing as they don't want to give up their plunder so easily. Use the taser. Man in a ski mask is in the middle of the store holding the girl by her throat and yelling at the employees. Pull a gun on him, make it clear that he better give up. Man releases the girl and starts to run, then enters the room with a bunch of refrigerators and disappears. Shout, come out or else. Firefight at Rubinov. Ruba. Oh, holy fuck. Getting all tongue tied in there's names too. Rubinovich Casino. A gang stormed the casino and went straight for the utility room. The eyewitnesses who called the police said he heard gunshots. Then the gang members started carrying out some boxes. Let's bring in the heat for that one. I'm 
we got here. Vehicular incident, or accident rather, in Chinatown. The owner of a grocery uh, saw a car drive onto the sidewalk and knock over a girl who was playing with her roller skates. Then the bastard stopped, waited a second, and then backed up over the child again. I've heard that's how the Chinese do it back home, but are we really going to let them get away with it here? Platonic in Barcelona. Check it out. Prostitution at Kevin's Throat Bar. Frank Zucker reports that a young blonde in a short red dress approached him at the bar and offered to go to bed with him for cash. I've never laid down with a whore. Can you believe this bitch? <laughs> Imprisonment at Debbie's Special Cafe. A man with a strong Spanish accent said that a dozen people are being held against their will in a basement of a cafe. The hostess of the chief, or sorry, hostess of the cafe seeks out near needy ingredient in blah, blah, blah. needy immigrants, gains their trust and promises mountains of gold, then imprisons them and makes them work around the clock for stale food. According to the man who called this, he was one of the slaves, but he managed to escape. The woman also has five armed guards who regularly beat up the least productive workers. Go check that out. <laughs> Blonde is Frank Zucker's ex girlfriend. She came to the bar with her friends, and Frank saw her and decided to teach her a lesson. Three new frames in this investigation. Probably something like that. Uh, police impersonation at Lucifer in the Sky with Lizard's Nightclub. That's a hell of a name. Four police officers entered the nightclub and started arresting people for having fun. They bullied the girls, and when the guys got angry, they beat them up and humiliated them. One of them put a gun into the patron's mouth and shouted at the others. Another cock knock cop knocked over, knocked out a man's front teeth with the butt of his gun. The club manager has serious doubts that these are even real police officers. Suspects that one of his competitors might have sent them over to cause trouble. Police found a secret tunnel into the basement and decided, descended into a very dark and smelly room. A man noticed the police shouts something and quickly disappears inside. Let's turn on the flashlight and inspect the room. Police are taking enemy fire. Let's return fire. That was like... That was definitely a setup of sorts. Some weird shit going on there. Alright, let's send Stokes and Samadhi. Love how the, the clock just stopped at 3. It's like, yeah. yeah. Day 66, September 18th, Wednesday. Mr. Boyd, I am Agent Avrahami, and this is Agent Roberts. You'll have to come with us. 
What now? Ugh. Please get dressed, Mr. Boyd. We'll wait for you in the car. Mr. Boyd, did you hear what I said? You know what? You boys can go to hell. I'm not going anywhere. Not right now, at least. You can come down to the police station during regular hours. You can't just come to my house while I'm sleeping, pull me out of bed without any breakfast. Right now, the only place I'm going is back to bed. I'm closing the door now, and if you... <laughs> Jack, what's all this? I told everyone what a great sport you are and how fun it would be to play a little joke on you. Where's your sense of humor gone? Ethan, it's five in the morning. At this hour, the only thing that'll get me laughing is one of you feds slipping on a banana peel. <laughs> well, what'd I tell you? He's such a joker. You're getting old, Ethan. Yeah, you're getting fatter, Jack. And you're getting boring. And you're getting fired. Fine. You win. Uh, but you're still a snappy dresser, Jack. As I'm sure you can guess, we've got an assignment here in Freeburg. Come on, let's go. We'll fill you in at the scene. Oh, and uh, I really am glad to see you, Jack. You have no idea. Meet Jack. And this is Agent Shiresh, Agent Camaro, Agent Ellis, and Agent Dixon. Jeez, how many men did you bring? Eleven people on my team, plus two heads, but they're still asleep at the hotel. We got to Freeburg a couple hours ago. Uh, actually, I was asked not to communicate with the local police, at least until the press conference, but, well, you're a friend. And by the way, you're lucky you didn't have time for breakfast. Now, the press are calling him the dentist. Just like every other fucking maniac, he's got his own stupid nickname. We spent 19 years chasing this guy. The M.O. is always the same. He kills young women in a small town, drops out of sight, and then reappears on the other end of the country with a fresh set of victims. He kills without hesitation, stuns the victim, then strangles her while she's unconscious. And that's when things get fun. He uses a power tool to ream out the dead girl's mouth. For five years, we've heard nothing. That's the longest break he's ever taken. Then six hours ago, we got a crazy anonymous tip that the dentist was in Friedberg, and he'd already committed his first murder. They even told us the address of the house. Looks like our anonymous tip came from the dentist himself, but that hasn't been verified yet. Oh, uh, Dixon, don't go anywhere. So, Jack, listen. Dixon will take you to the station. You can bring your people up to speed. I'm looking forward to full cooperation, and it would be great if you could bag a criminal like this before you retire. A nice farewell. You know what I'm saying, Jack? Yeah, a nice farewell. And Dixon? Mr. Boyd will tell you where to take him. Come on, look alive. You're the police chief's driver today, if that's good enough for you. I'll come around to see you tonight. Buy us some beers, huh? But not that piss you normally drink. That stuff gives me wicked heartburn. Uh, yeah, you can have the day off, Spain. All right, shift B here. It looks like we're running nine people today because Spain's off for the day. We have our four detectives all working the gang case there. We've went through our catalog of music here. String Quartet number one by uh, Borodin. Serial murder, residential area. 21-year-old uh, Allison Bell, City Hall intern, was brutally murdered at her apartment. Okay, let me pull. Pulling up 
canceling everyone for this assignment. Can I only have two people on that case? Uh, I'll wait and see. I can probably have more. If not, then I'll put people back on their cases. We're B today, right? Looks like we have an assault at residential area and a beast man found himself stuck in an elevator. When people attempted to help him out, he lashed out and began to strangle one of them. This is the third time I'm late to work and it's all because of this fucking elevator. Gibbons, take steel and check that out please. Three new frames. Detective Johnson fell into a violent trap sent by the dentist declared dead on the scene. Jesus Christ. Mr. Boyd, after the needless death of Detective Johnson, the guys had a quick word and we decided we can't keep going on assignments like this without SWAT support. Hello Jack, I suspect you don't like the dentist nickname any more than I do, but let's just say that Let's just say that's who I am and get down to business. Take a good look at the postcard I sent you. It points to a place where I hid something. Follow the clues. Keep on the trail. Let's just say there's a reason I'm giving you a chance to catch me. But don't dare share this clue with the feds or the trail will go cold. I promise you and hurry. If I don't figure out the right place in the next 24 hours, I'll destroy all the evidence and walk away. Okay, so what do we see on this card? So it's a postcard that he sent. Yeah, I see angels. A depiction of heaven, I guess. Trumpets. So what could this mean in, in terms of the frame here? I'm thinking probably the pizza with the halo. gonna say the pizza with the halo chief you've gotten yourself into a dangerous game and you can't win without evidence on the dentist you hold in your hand a key to what happened to the victims look closely at the image on the card it will help you figure out where the evidence is hidden send your detectives but don't go around blindly guessing i doubt you have the resources to go to all possible places in time What do we have here? Attempted murder at a residential area. Noli Concierge reports that he saw an angry girl uh, through the window attacking someone's car with a baseball bat yelling, Get out, you painted wretch. Come on, I know you can hear me. I will kill you myself. Let's send uh, Anna Tanishi and Lazzarini. Serial murder. Holy house pizza. The dentist may have... Hidden evidence here about the murder of Allison Bell. It has to be Holy House Pizza, right? So that's what we're all thinking, correct? Okay. Moser. That's all Shift A stuff. Moser. Moser, Moody, Sandstorm, Cosma. Which is these ones. Moser, Moody, Sandstorm, Kuzma. What do we got here? Derek Allen, Sophocles Theater of Drama. Mr. Boyd, my attempts uh, to raise the ratings of Justice for All failed and I won't let go. But I'm getting ready to launch a new TV project this time about the harsh everyday life of ordinary police officers. For the pilot episode, I need two cops who we can ride around with for several hours. We'll go around the city in the police car and record various real life stories. Your officers will be awarded $300 and you'll be and you'll get a more impressive bonus. This time we do have a real budget. Right in Percy. You two are up then. Keep the man busy.
Discovered evidence hidden by the dentist. What is that? I guess that's a piece of his outfit, maybe? Has to have been, right? Rat Among Us from Deputy Jack. Officer Steele somehow learned about the postcard from the dentist, uh, and he's up in arms that you've been suppressing evidence. He demands that I take action immediately, or he's taking this directly to, pro to the prosecutor's office. I convinced him to sit on it for a couple more days, but we have to do something fast. We have an arson at the Freeburg Birth Control Union. Three people died in a blaze at the Freeburg Birth Control Union Women's Center. I'm strong. Take Casey with you. Tomorrow we're at 10. I'm not gonna remember that. My fucking recording is gonna end before that. <laughs> Fuck. I don't even know if I'm gonna do another recording today. Chief, thank you for the wonderful help. I think I'll make a great TV series. In fact, we ran out of true stories and had to improvise a little, and I think someone blurted out something not very nice about the police and about you personally, but don't take it to heart. Fraud at Fortune Bank, and a bank employee reports a suspicious man came into the bank. He's obviously trying to cash a forged check. The cashier also says that the man is hiding something under his jacket. They also have a theft at the market. Michael Gibson was one of... one. Of, was only away from his vegetable shop for two minutes. Someone managed to steal a big cart filled with watermelons. I brought that hauler a month ago. Bright orange, easy to spot. The thing weighs almost 500 pounds, so they can't have gotten far. What do we got here? Michael Ayers, the nurse. I was about to go home when the building suddenly lost power and it got really quiet. Then I heard a muffled noise, like a little clap from just down the street. The building had about 10 employees. I didn't notice the smoke at first, and when I saw the fire, I began to yell. But it was too late. Some people just didn't make it out. Sylvia James, the doctor, says... At the time of the tragedy, I should have already been home. I was just leaving, and I ran into Ronald Sherman on the street. He's the ex-husband of one of our patients who decided not to have her child after she consulted with the Freeburg Birth Control Union. After that, Mr. Shaman openly quarreled with his wife. I understand he beat her, and later they divorced. Since then, he's come to her offices several times, and on the evening of the fire, he was standing across the road wearing a large backpack. He made a point of walking past me, and he muttered something in the spirit of burn in hell, bitch. I thought how close I already was to hell, but if people could wear such ugly red sweaters. Sean Galvarez, the fire inspector, says the fire was started with a small plastic container filled with accelerant, which was thrown from the street through an open window. When the fire began, the building was already without power, which inf uh, interfered with the usual evacuation plan. Due to the external cable show uh, that they were not cut, but simply pulled from the wall by force. Uh, the suspect is sitting in a chair, obviously very nervous. He grows very agitated while he sees the police and starts banging his foot on the floor. It's ready your gun and slowly approach the suspect. The man suddenly jumps up and grabs the woman standing next to him, putting a huge knife to her throat. He knows that the police are there for him.
I know it's not your fault. Let's just go down to the station and talk about this. Across the market, there's an elderly couple rolling a big blue cart filled with fruit uh, that looks like the watermelons. Let's continue the search for the criminals. He said it was an orange cart. Around the farmer's market, there are three carts. One of them is orange filled with watermelons. Three women are carrying something over to a small truck. Let's watch until someone goes to the orange cart. What do we got here? Trespassing on a farm. Bill Buckler said that no less than 20 cultists have taken up residence on his farm. Uh, they claim that the house and the surrounding acreage belong to them. Sorry, acreage. Uh, the Lord has given unto us this land for our suffering. According to Buckley, Buckler's unwanted guests, some of the cultists are armed. Big yard. <laughs> yeah, this might be my last recording of this for the day. Like I said, I have Assassin's Creed Valhalla downloading in the background, so I'm really excited to jump into that. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, we got more um, frames on the drug possession thing. There we go. Dante Gambino, an old Italian who has worked his whole life in the funeral business. Uh, where would he be? A library? Dante Gambino is a fan of ancient Greek poetry. He spends every free minute reading. Or the Atlas Funeral Home. Dante Gambino spends most of his time at work. Probably at work. Let's send Vela, Trevor, and the SWAT team to go pick him up. We also got three new frames in the arson here. We know they were pulled out. Probably something like that. He surprisingly wasn't there. Interesting. Who was it? Mole? I should put Mole on Shift B. Yeah, let's declare her dead. Okay. Or Shift A, sorry. So I'm going to put Steel on Shift A. That way I can get him into that trap and get rid of him that way. Mole on Shift A. That way I can uh, arrest that asshole. So I went downstairs, figuring I'd find some mercenary or an escaped serial killer or some other low life I'd put away, right? But when I hit the lights, I saw a young kid. Couldn't have been 20. Skinny, dirty. Didn't even have a real weapon, just a rusty shiv. He just stood there. Didn't say anything. My whole career, I've been staring down the most dangerous people in the country, and the only one to get into my house and scare my family to death was just some kid about to crap his pants. And I pointed my gun at him, and he just stood there with his mouth open. Bad luck for him. He was pretty lucky to still be alive. And you know what? It was you that saved him. I think you have me confused with somebody else, Ethan. No, 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 no. Listen. All these years, me and Marla joked about how dangerous my job is. We figured that sooner or later, someone would sneak into our house and cut us to pieces, yeah? Pretty dark jokes, but innocent enough. And Marla asks me not to jump into gunfights when she kisses me on the cheek before I leave for work. It's like we figured that if we joke about stuff like that, then it'll never actually happen. But, um... 
While I trained my gun at the kid's nose, I finally realized someone really can get into our house. Someone really can cut us to pieces. Now that it finally happened, I can't make any more jokes like that. Marla won't laugh anymore. She'll burst into tears and stay in bed all day crying, hating me more and more every second. So I figured the only way out of the situation was to show her that if someone really does dare to break into our house, he's guaranteed to get a bullet in the face. He'll die right there on the living room carpet. God, Ethan, didn't know you were so bloodthirsty. I'm telling you, Jack, I was serious about shooting this kid right there where he stood. I was about to pull the trigger. But then I remembered you. Remembered a uh, thousand years ago we went to the lake and had some beers after an ethics lecture at the academy. I was all angry with that uh, professor, uh, Laszlo. Yeah. Remember what he always told us? Being a good policeman is very simple. You just need to keep doing the right thing. I hated those pretentious speeches. I cussed Laszlo up and down and said, If you always do what's right, you've turned yourself into a robot. And you just sat there, drunk eyes staring into the distance. And you were all calm and said, No, Ethan, it's the other way around. To do the right thing takes everything you got as a human. <laughs> I said that. Oh, what an idiot I was. Come on, Jack. It's not funny. When things get bad, it's those moments you gotta be hopeful and, and stay human. And I did just like you said. I stayed human. And then I slapped the cuffs on the kid in one quick move. Just like Bobby Flash. Bobby Flash? What? You don't remember Evening Freeberg, the old news column? Stories about the cop hero Bobby Flash? I heard they even published a book a few years ago. Oh, that Bobby Flash. Yeah, that Bobby Flash. How can you not remember Bobby Flash? We all argued at junior high about which one of us would be Bobby Flash when he grows up. Oh, I'm no Bobby Flash. A hero cop would never think about shooting a terrified teenager. But wait a minute. If I'm not Bobby Flash, then maybe you are. Yeah, maybe so. All right. I'm over for time, so I'm going to end it here. When we come back, I will try to remember that, you know, 10 o'clock... I gotta send Steel on that mission alone. Besides that, though, this was a good productive recording session, and I'm interested to see how that case with the feds go. I'm interested to see how uh, my gang-related cases go, and I'm interested just to see how the game continues on. So, um, all of that will be, you know, obviously in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and say comment down below, subscribe, share it. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.